house to gather in his name to worship him. Concentrate on him. Mm. 
Say that again, so forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate. Christ worshiped him. Oh, yeah. Christ the Lord. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name. Worship him. Let us lift up holy hands. Magnify his name. Oh, come on and worship the Lord. Let us lift up. him Thank God this morning, even through technical difficulties, God is still good. Amen. Technical difficulties are frustrating when they don't work, but technology is wonderful when it does work. And uh, we are going to give God the praise. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive. Yes. Uh, could have been the other way around, but God has been good. Is that right? God has been merciful uh, and God has been kind. And not only that, God has been true. Uh, and I'm thanking and praising God for being God and God alone. I'm grateful that God doesn't need any help being God. Uh, he doesn't need anybody's help to work on me. Uh, but I'm glad to know that I need his help. Uh, because when I'm in the time of trouble, the Bible says he shall hide me upon his holy hill. In his pavilion shall he hide me. And I don't know about you, but these are some troubling times. Um, these are some troubling times, but it's good to know that we have a refuge in the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. We have a refuge in God. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell us where we would be. Uh, this time I'm going to ask Deacon Combs to come. We're going to do things different today. Uh, this morning, I'm going to ask Deacon Combs to come and give us our invocation. Uh, then Deacon Red will come. Uh, after we've done our intercessory prayer with our scripture. Uh, and while uh, you are doing, while we are getting prepared for that, would you turn to the book of Acts chapter 27? I just want you to open your book up to the book of Acts chapter 27 in your homes, wherever you are. Just open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 27. And when you have it, say amen. If you don't say hold on or help me, Jesus. And I feel there's a couple of help me's on the line. And so we'll wait for you to get to Acts chapter 27. But Deacon Combs is coming now uh, with our prayer of invocation. Invocation is the time that we invoke the presence of the Lord in this place and allow God to know he is welcome in this place because we know that God wants 
us wants us to welcome him into our hearts, into our homes, and into our lives. And so we have the option to welcome him, uh, but here it's a mandate that we welcome God in worship. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. Almighty God, we humble ourselves on this morning, Lord, knowing that because of circumstances and situations that you are the most high God and we have to rely on you for all things because you said in your word you would never leave us nor would you forsake us. Lord, on today I ask that as we prepare to go into worship, Ease our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls, and allow us to receive the word that's about to come forth from this preacher this on this morning, Lord. A, a word sent by God to a man of God for the people of God on this morning. Lord, we, we know that you know what we're going through with this corona uh, 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 virus, uh, 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 the, the lockdowns, the shutdowns, and things getting ready to start opening it up. But Lord, we ask you to give us something that is that, that we have lost a long time ago, Lord. We ask for you to give all of us common sense. We ask for common sense because we see people riding motorcycles and bicycles and, and, and walking down the streets with no mask on, disregarding the things that will keep all those that are making sure that they stay safe to keep them safe. For all those that are, that, that, that are ignorant to the fact that what they do can have an adverse effect on what we, the people that abide by the rules and the guidelines, how they affect us. Some are unaware of what could possibly happen. But when you've been through some things and God has carried you and brought you out of some things, we ask that you step in right now, Lord, because we know you're going to take care of yours, your sons and your daughters. We know you're going to take care of yours, all of us. And you will take care of those that don't consider themselves yours. Because no matter what, you created each and every one of us. And as it was said in Bible study this morning, we all have a purpose. We all have a job to do. But we have to be mindful of how we go about doing it, where we are when we do it, and what we do when we're doing it. Asking you to lift up all those that are sick and shut in in, a, in, in nursing homes. Those that can't have visits from their families who are going through. Heavenly Father, uh, open the doors, Lord, not only to the hospitals, not only to the hospitals, but Lord, open the doors to the hearts and the minds of those people today. Lord, we pray this prayer in your most holy and precious name. My soul said, amen. Beloved, it's prayer time. time and moment that we uh, call the names of those persons that we know who are sick and shut in and those persons who may be in hospitals, those persons who may be having health challenges or different circumstances that you know of. It is a time where we would suspend our own wants and our own desires to offer the names up of those persons that are in need, those families that are in need. And so now we ask that you would comment uh, the names that you want to have called out in prayer. Baker and Miss Tina Baker who lost their son to COVID-19 and we pray for uh, Deaconess Wyatt and the Wyatt family who lost and the sister Martha Drummond who lost their sister uh, and sister Ruth we ask that you would continue to keep them in prayer and pray their strength as they go through this trying time the author the altar is open for prayer to worship 
worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, a sweet sound in your ear. sing that with us as we prepare to go to the Lord's throne to worship you oh my soul rejoice come on here take joy my king in what you hear And let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh, yes. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Exalt thee, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. We exalt thee, so we exalt thee. Oh, we exalt thee. We call the Benson family out in prayer. First Refuge family. Pastor and his family and the Johnson family, the Williams and Johnson families, the Smith families. of the First Refuge family, the McCaleb family, William Goldman. We call their names out in prayer. God, our Father, we pause now to give your name the glory, honor, and the praise. We pray, God, that you would hear the petitions of these thy people the names that have been called. God, we ask that you would honor our prayer. Go by their bedsides of affliction. God, go into their homes or into the hospitals or whatever they are. <clears throat> go into the prisons, God. Go into all the earth, God. Touch these families as only you can. Heal, set free, and deliver. We know that you're able. We know that you're willing and we know that you can. And God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Our soul says, Amen. Come on and sing it. We exalt thee. We exalt. Bibles with you. 
One more time. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee, O Lord. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen, my father's children. God is good, isn't he? He is good and merciful. As you prepare, as we prepare for the scripture, want to remind you that Bible studies are on Wednesday on Zoom at seven o'clock. We are studying the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. We've had two impactful, powerful um, lessons thus far, and um, we're trusting God that he is going to do marvelous and great things through our understanding of the word, that we may go in the richness of his word. And as we as we shape our relationship uh, that is pleasing to God, we pray, as the scripture says, that he will reveal more to us as our fruits labor from a life that is pleasing to the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, your giving is still warranted uh, and there are several ways that you can continue to give to support this ministry <clears throat> here at 1479 Kane Avenue in the beautiful city of Camden, New Jersey, in the Parkside section. If you want to give electronically, you can give through our Tithely app. If you don't have it, you can download it in your uh, Play or Apple store uh, on your Android or on your iPhone. Tithely you can download the app timely, sign up and give according to God has prospered you, or you can give through our cash app. That is the dollar sign First Refuge 1479. It is the dollar sign, then First Refuge 1479. That is our cash app link, or you can do uh, it the traditional way. We are here till one o'clock on Sundays and you can bring your offering here after this broadcast is over and we'll be here till one or you can mail your check or money order to the church to 1479 Canes Avenue in Camden, New Jersey. Listen, we need your help so that we can continue to bring you these services and give you uh, what thus says the Lord in these trying times because I do believe that God is trying to get his message to his people and there's no devil in hell for I heard the scripture writers ask the question who can separate us from the love of God there is nothing that can separate us. no tribulation no death no sorrow can separate us from the love of God because we are the church not just in buildings but we are the church within our hearts we are the vessels we are the bride of Christ and we are waiting his coming again. We are waiting that second coming. But while we're here, we're still going to praise his name. And this, my beloved, is just the rehearsal to what's going to happen when we all get to heaven. But I'm so glad to know that they can't crown him until I get there. I wish I had a witness. And so we're going to glory in the fact that God is still good, that God is still able, and that God is still performing miracles in your life and in my life and in the lives of this country. And God can still deliver and set free an abominable nation. I may get in trouble for that. But I believe this country needs, to, needs a call to repentance for the mass atrocities that it has uh, put upon the people of this country, the less fortunate, the underprivileged, the poor, 
the despondent, the destitute. This country must repent of its sins in order for God to prosper it. Pastor, how can you say that? Well, history lets us know that Israel had to do the same thing. And God said that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, my beloved, will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and then, here it is, will I heal their land. I don't know about you, but this land needs healing. This land needs healing. This land needs restoration. And the only way it can happen, God said, if my people, which are called by my name. Now, not everybody's called by the name of God. Uh, but if you're called by his name, you need to repent. For Jesus said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So we are in a season of repentance. We are in a season of reconciliation. This is not a time to take a break and sit down, but this is a time to worship the Lord. This is a time to get to know the Lord better than we've ever gotten to know him before. Beloved, don't take advantage. I take advantage of this time. Take advantage of this time. Don't take advantage of God, but take advantage of this time to get right with God. Deacon Red is going to come and read the scripture, Acts chapter 27, Acts chapter 27. And I want us to begin at verse number 31, Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 31. I know that you're beginning at verse 31. Beginning at verse number 31. After he has read verse 31, he will then read verses 42 unto 44. So verse number 31, and then we will skip down to verses 42 unto 44. Amen. Good morning, church. Paul said to the centurions, to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Verse 42, and the soldiers counseled was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save, Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. And the rest, some on board, and some of the broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. God's word, God's word for God's people.
consecrate me to this thy service by thy power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the place where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to thy precious bleeding sound lord send the preacher Take Levi Combs out of self and give me a fresh anointing. Lord, we can't do anything without you. Your name will get the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Our soul says, Amen. We need. Uh, that wasn't where I was going, but thanks be to God. Uh, I want to first, uh, before we begin, thank and praise God for uh, our, uh, praise God, new technical team here. Uh, uh, I thank God that uh, for Sky, who was on and operating our Zoom, our camera, and the laptops, and Tiana, who uh, took over for her mother and is operating the uh, soundboard. Uh, and I thank God that I've got some help uh, because I sure God needed it today. Uh, and thank God for Tiana's patience because my patience was wearing thin, uh, very, very thin, like very thin. Amen. Very thin. And so, uh, but we were able to, uh, we may not have been able to broadcast the Sunday school this morning, but thank God we made it in time for worship. Somebody say amen. Uh, and so thank God for these deacons who have been faithful and thank God for Sister and Deaconess Cooper who has been faithful to making sure that our, our Sunday school lessons are on time, timely and thorough. Somebody say amen. And thank God for Sister Eunice back there, who uh, is, is she? She said, she said, she said she was determined to be here. Uh, she said, "Wasn't well, nothing going to stop her from being in worship." And so,
<laughs> well, we thank God for <laughs> we thank God for you. We thank God for Sister Robin going to go pick up Sky. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Folks got up early this morning to start worship on time. And so we thank and praise God for that. And I thank and praise God for all you, my viewers, who continue to view these streamed services on uh, YouTube. Uh, pretty soon, if the Lord allows, we'll be able to stream, multi-stream on Facebook and on Zoom together. Uh, I'm still working on some things to do that, so be patient with us. Uh, because I know there are some Facebookers who are faithful to Facebook and not faithful to YouTube. So we want to reach everybody. Uh, I just got to figure out how to do it all. But we'll figure we'll figure it out in 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 due time. Um, and so I thank Deacon Red for reading our scripture. Uh, he's read our scripture for us. Uh, and I just want to revisit it one more time. And Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, they cannot be saved. 42, the soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners, um, lest than they should swim away, lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. And he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard firsthand, make for the land, and the rest on planks and on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to the land. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to just deal with this thought. I preached this text uh, several times and came back to my mind in these trying times that we are currently living in. Uh, because this text uh, sheds light and helps the believer uh, of what to do uh, when you're almost shipwrecked. Uh, it, it shows the believer where to trust when you can only hold on to broken pieces. Um, how to trust God in the midst of a storm. And so I just wanted to talk about how to trust God in the midst of a storm. Beloved of God, I think there's no, there's nothing worse than to be on a ship and the ship is in the middle of a storm. I think perhaps that is why I don't like cruise ships. Uh, I've never been on a cruise ship. I don't have any desire to grow on a cruise ship. I, I just have a problem with being on a big boat surrounded by an ocean of water. I don't, I know that you all may take your trips and you may love the cruise ships, but that's good for you. Uh, but I, I just, I, I don't, I, I just cannot, Ebony, I cannot for the life of me uh, uh, get myself to even think about getting on a cruise ship. Now, I love to look at the cruise ships. Uh, when I go down to Florida and go, go to the dock in Fort Lauderdale, I love to see the whole uh, kit and caboodle. I love to see the cruise ship. I even know how it works. You got to fly in New York and then take a flight from New York down to uh, Florida, and then you got to board on the ship, and then the ship can take you on these one-day cruises to Jamaica, to Bermuda, to the islands, and you get back on the ship. I know how the ship works, but, but I just don't want to be on the ship. I was looking at the news the other day and saw where there's one ship, I think it's the Carnival, that, that still has, uh, 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 what do you call them when you're on the ship? Uh, what do they call? Uh, what do you call when you're on the ship? Uh, no, you are, a, you are a, whatever they call you when you get on board. Um, I forgot what they call them, but they, they've got people still on the ship in quarantine. Now, let me tell you something. 
uh, that's beyond cabin fever for me. Um, <laughs> listen, there, there is, there is no way I must stay on the ship longer than what I intended. Uh, listen, I don't like being on planes. That's why I like to drive everywhere I go. The only time I get on the plane is when I've got to get on the plane. I just think ships, for me, there, there's something about being on a boat and seeing waves come and storms come. And I said, nah, Doc, I'm all right. I'll, 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 I'll meet y'all there. I'll take a flight or something. But uh, I just don't understand uh, the, the, the ship process in terms of how folks love the ship. But there are people who love to be on boats, love to be on the ship, love the cruises, love where it docks, love the experience. And, 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 they, and they talk about it uh, uh, so much of how much they love being on a cruise. But what would happen if the weatherman told you that the hurricane was coming and told you not to get on the ship and you still said, shoot, I'm getting on this ship. I didn't spend my money. <laughs> And I had not been through six months of a payment plan. Oh, I'm getting on this ship. Had to get me a new passport picture and all that. Oh, I'm getting on this ship. The weatherman told you, don't get on the ship. But you said, I'm getting on the ship. And you find yourself on the ship, on the sh shipwrecked. You're worse than uh, the, the crew of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> um, I, I heard, uh, I saw a meme on Facebook last night um, that said, uh, even on Gilligan's Island, the professor didn't listen to the millionaire. Y'all will get that later. Paul is on a ship and Paul was not on ship, on the ship as a murderer. He was not on the ship as a thief, a robber. He was not on the ship as a molester. He was not on the ship as a criminal, but he was on the ship imprisoned nonetheless. And the reason that Paul was imprisoned, Deacon Red, uh, was not for violating the oracles of God, but he was arrested because of his testimony of who the Lord is to him and what the Lord can do. And I wonder how many of us in this life uh, are able to actually take the risk and love God and Jesus Christ so much that you are willing to go to jail because of your testimony. That you are willing to lose your job because of your testimony. That you are willing to trust God not knowing what the outcome is going to be in the end for you. For all of us have feelings and all of us have emotions and all of us have those, 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 those thoughts sometimes that even where we are that sometimes we trust ourselves more than we trust God. We trust what we can see and what we know before we trust God whom we cannot see but who we can feel. Amen. But we only trust God primarily when we need him. And I believe that we have come to a point in life where we have taken advantage of the kindness and the mercy of our Savior. But Paul is on a cruise, on a, on, a, on a prison ship. Paul was a preacher who didn't mind Deaconess Cooper preaching 
to those persons whom uh, the church would look at uh, with with their noses held high. Paul was uh, took a page out of Jesus' book, and he was talking to the run of the mill sinners. You know those those sinners who are in the crack house. Uh, you know those sinners that's at the bar on the bar stool. You know you know them kind of folk. Uh, 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 you know th those kind of folk that you used to be. Before you got saved, them them type of folk uh, before Christ, Paul wasn't afraid to go into some places, knowing that they may scandalize his name and they may talk about him. But he said, "But the gospel's got to be preached. The testimony has to go forth. Save the cross. I don't care what may happen to me because I'm not so much concerned about what can happen to this body because I know where this body is going when I leave here. Or how can Paul make that as shown? Paul will later write in Corinthians, for I know when this mortal shall put on immortality. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Paul said, then shall be brought the, the saying that is written that death is swallowed up in victory. And death, and then Paul then interviews death and the grave and says, oh, death, where is thy sting? And oh, grave, where is thy victory? Paul could preach and know that I may be in prison, but he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, Paul knew that no matter where I am, if I live, I got it. And if I die, I got it. Because there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God. You, I don't care what shackles you put on me. I don't care uh, what you put above my name. I know who I am in God because if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature and all things are passed away. And Paul could give his testimony and say, listen, brother, I was a man of the Pharisee. I was a man. And let me tell you my testimony before we get on this ship. Uh, the Lord's telling me, I don't, y'all, y'all shouldn't get on this ship, but uh, I'm telling you, you ought to wait a couple of days. But, but if you're going to get on the ship, let me tell you who Jesus is to me. Let me tell you about a man that found me on the Damascus Road. Let me tell you about a man that knew I had some papers. And on these papers, I was about to kill his people and lock them up. And now it's ironic because the folk that I was going to lock up uh, are the same folk, uh, the folk that I was going to lock up. I got the papers from the folk that has now locked me up. Y'all, did y'all get what I said? The same folk that gave me the papers to lock his folk up are the same folk that now got me locked up on this ship. I wish I had a witness. That ought to tell you, you ought to watch the people you hang around. You've got to watch those persons that you think have your back. You've got to watch those persons that you think have your best interest because they are the same folk that have put you in shackles. Paul said, let me tell you, I know where I am. And not only do I know where I am, I know where I'm going. And the reason that I know where I'm going is because I met a man on a lonely road. I met a man that when I thought I was high, might sedate, snooty, and sedity, I met a man who knocked me off my high horse, literally knocked me down off my high horse. And not only did he knock me down, but he blinded mine eyes and I could not see. And the reason he blinded mine eyes is because he didn't want me to believe in him because I saw him. He wanted me to believe in him so from what I heard from him. And what I felt when I heard his voice, because there is something different from seeing and believing than hearing and believing. See, when you see something, you believe it because you see it. See, that's what Thomas' problem was when Jesus came. And they said, Thomas, listen, Jesus is here. Thomas said, unless I see the prince in his hands and place my hand in his side. Thomas confesses it. I will not believe. And I heard the writer said, uh, uh, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And Paul giving his testimony said, I didn't see him, but I heard him. 
I didn't see him, but I felt him. I didn't see him, but I felt a transformation. I didn't see him, but I saw a change in me. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Uh, in order for you to see Jesus, you first got to see the change in you. And when you see the change in you, that's when you can see Jesus who changed you. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. I wish I had a witness here. And Paul said, let me tell you my testimony. I was a man of the Pharisees. I Listen, I, I lived a good life. I, I had it all. I, I didn't want for anything. I, I had a good, I came from good stock. I came from a good family and I and I, I you know I was I was close to the king I I was I was there I, I know I, I had it going on and these old mangy converts these old mangy uh converted Christians and these old mangy Jews and Gentiles these old these old mangy folk that Peter had been preaching to and Peter had a mega church uh, uh these old mangy disciples and apostles that Jesus said they got on my last nerve and I said I'm going to stop it and I went to get some papers in order for me to stop these Christians from spreading this heresy, from spreading this word about this man that was supposedly raised, was raised from the dead. Paul says, I was on my way. I packed my bags. I had my GPS set. I was ready to go. I had sharpened my knives. I had on the best clothes, you know, Gucci in them. I had on the good stuff. I had my feral gamos on. I, I had it going on. Listen, uh, my girl had her fur in, on her horse. Uh, we had it going on. We was about to do some major destruction. But then Jesus came into my life, came into my heart. Before we get on the ship, let me tell you my testimony. Because I know that God told me not to get on this ship. And I need you to know who holds the ship in the midst of the storm we're about to get in. And I was knocked down and I heard his voice say and call me by my government name and said, Saul, Saul, listen, why persecutest thou me? Paul said, listen, when I heard that voice, it was like hearing my mama call me to tell that it was time to come in. You know that time when you had to get in before the lights came on. I wish I, you know that call when your mama calls you. You, you already know what it is by how she uses her voice. I wish I had a witness. I wish I had some folk that got beat a couple times because they were disobedient. I wish I had some folk that got on punishment and got beat because they wanted to come in when they wanted to come in. Paul said, I heard this voice. It was like my mama's voice. I, I knew what it was. And see, when you know your mama's voice, you know, even though she asked you a question, you better not answer that question. Oh, I, I guess I'm by myself. See, some questions are, aren't for answers. Some questions are just to make a point. And Paul knew Jesus wasn't asking a question for him to answer. Paul said, listen, are we going to cut all this out? He said, listen, I, look, I, listen, I didn't believe in you. I heard about you, but now I see. Oh, you real. Oh, you real? Oh, 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 it's like that. Oh, okay. Well, listen, uh, listen, Doc, we ain't got to go all the, and I don't, I'm going to throw these papers away. I don't know nothing about this. I don't, listen, I, how did I get here? Paul, Paul wouldn't know. I don't even know how. I, Lord, uh, what? This is not my office. I, I don't know what, wait a minute. Uh, 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 well, listen, well, what you want me to do? That's what Paul says. Jesus asked Paul a question, and Paul said, well, what would thou have me to do? You know how your mama used to get you? After you get a good beating, you get a good nap, then you clean your room. Or you that room better be spotless before dinner time. I wish I had a witness. I don't care about you, but some of the some of the best naps I had was after a beating. Paul had a Paul got a beating, y'all. Uh, Paul was left blind until he was given further instructions as to what his next job and what his next 
ministry was going to be, that he would be called an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I don't even want to be called an apostle. I was so bad. He said, uh, you know what y'all can call me? The chief of sinners. So I know why I'm locked up. And I'm not going to have a pity party because I got locked up. Because some of us in this season will experience tumultuous circumstances and situations and then want to have a pity party about why we're in the situation we're in. And we want to question the Lord and say, well, God, why would you allow this to happen? Paul never did that because Paul could say, when I look back over my life, I deserve everything I get. Just because I'm on the right road now does not mean I don't have stuff to answer for. And just because I've got stuff going on that is not in my favor does not mean I stop trusting and believing in the God that saved me. I wish I had a witness here. And Paul said, listen, I can handle being locked up, but even while I'm locked up, God is still using me. God is still using me for your for his glory. God is still using me for your edification. God is still using me because you need to understand that it ain't time to get on this boat yet. I might be in shackles, but my mind is not in bondage. I wish I had a witness. I may be locked up. I may be sentenced to death, but my mind is still stayed on the Lord because all day long I've been in worship. All day long. And Paul could say, listen, I've already been in jail before. I already know how it is. And there was a time that I was locked up and I prayed so hard that the bars of the jail fell off. I prayed so hard, uh, me and my partner, me and my boy, we, we prayed so hard to, to listen, even the soldiers thought they was going to get killed. And I had to tell the soldiers, and everybody is still here, and we accounted for. That, that's what happens when you change your life. That's what happens when you have a strong prayer life. Because the Bible says Paul sang hymns, and he prayed to God. Listen, my beloved I'm of this new generation, uh, but I still believe that the hymns are still right. I, I still believe that a good hymn will get you through some things. Uh, all this new contemporary music, that's all nice and well and good, but give me a song that can tell me a story. Give me a song that can tell me how I got over. Give me a song that can say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Give me a song that says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Give me a song that said, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Give me a song that can help me and say how I got over. My soul look back and wonder how I give it over, got over. Give me a song that said, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. I wish I had a word. Give me a song that's going to help me get over this boat situation. Give me a song that's going to help me get through this pandemic. Give me a song that's going to help me get healed while I got the coronavirus. Give me a song. And while I'm singing my song, I'm, I'm going to pray like Jesus did in Gethsemane. I'm going to pray so hard to sweat like drops of blood. I'm going to pray so hard that I've got nothing left but tears. I'm going to pray so hard that somebody got to tell me to stop. I'm going to pray so hard because I know who Jesus is in my life. So I might be locked up, I might be shackled up, but my mind and my mouth still works. You may, you may shackle my arms and you may shackle my feet, but you can't shackle my praise. You can't shackle my anointing. I wish I had a witness in this place. I wish I had a witness at home to understand that even when Jesus was on the cross, they might have nailed his hands and they might have nailed his feet and they might put a cross on his head, but they could not stop his mouth from talking. They could not stop him from saying, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? They could not stop him from saying, from this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. They could not stop him from saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They could not stop him from saying that I thirst. They could not stop him from saying, woman, behold thy son and son, behold thy mother. They could not stop Jesus from hanging his head in the locks of his shoulders and saying, giving up the ghost and saying, it is finished. And Paul is trying to get over to them that y'all better not get on this boat. 
But if you get on this boat, I know Jesus is going to go with us. Yes, and he's not going, getting, uh, going to go on this boat simply because of you. He's on this boat because he's got a servant that he's not finished with. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Somebody needs to know today, this afternoon, that even when you are on your boat that is shipwrecked, you are still a survivor simply because even though you might be shackled by the world, you're still on assignment because of the Savior. And if he said that I will not leave you nor forsake you, that means I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how bad the storm may be. I'm still on assignment. I still have a responsibility. I still have a job that has to be done. Yes, I stood before Agrippa. Yes, I stood before Nero. Yes, I stood before Felix. Yes, I stood before Festus. Yes, I was whipped in Philippi and thrown in jail. Yes, I stood and I was left for dead. Yes, uh, I've been falsely accused, but I'm still on assignment. I'm still on assignment because... I know that I still got to preach the gospel and the testimony of Jesus Christ. This pandemic is not a time for us to take a recess on our assignment. But this is a time that we've got to learn how to meander through this storm. That we may not be on the boat anymore. And the boat might be shipwrecked, but there are some pieces that we can hold on to. I wish I had a witness I said, I wish I had a witness. For well, it was Peter who said, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him glorify God on behalf, on this behalf rather. In other words, what Peter is saying, suffering should not surprise believers. Suffering should not surprise us because in this, beloved, we groan. We suffer because of who Christ is to us. He didn't say that this road was going to be easy. He didn't say that we would not face trials and tribulations. He did not say that this would be a cakewalk. But he, would, he did say, you shall endure tribulations. I wish I had a witness. Oh, can I call on a witness? Job and Joseph suffered, and virtually all the Old Testament prophets suffered. Jesus taught his followers that they would suffer, and even Jesus himself suffered. And Jesus, in other words, set an example for us and said, if I suffered and I made it, I suffered so when you suffer, you can make it. And so you're still on assignment in your suffering. I don't care what it is. I don't care... If it's death, I don't care. If it's health, I don't care. If it's finances, I don't care. If it's a breakup, you may suffer, but you're still on assignment. So Paul was not complaining because of his suffering. For I heard Paul say, when he told Agrippa, and Agrippa almost beat Paul to a bloody pulp, and Agrippa asked Paul, well, what do you say about your Jesus now? Paul looked at as they had him bent down and Paul said, well, if you let me up, I'll tell you what I think of him. Paul straightened up his shoulders, stood boldly before the king and said, I count it all joy to suffer for my Lord. Why? Because we are to consciously choose the path of suffering. It was Jesus and Matthew who said, for whoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Paul was willing to give up his life for the sake of Jesus Christ. And in the text, Paul advised the men on the board of the ship that they, there was extreme weather trouble awaiting them. And this was the time of year during November through February where it was a dangerous, it was dangerous to sail uh, if the winter winds and the storms were going to blow. Paul perceived the decision to set sail would be treacherous. But like anything, 
They didn't listen to Paul. And they set sail anyway. That's like some of us. Uh, we, all can, uh, uh, we all can tell the story that all of us at some point of an, uh, or another had a grandmother, had a mother, or had a father that gave us sound advice. Told us it wasn't wise to make the decision that we were about to make. Come on, talk back to me here. Because the reality of it, the reality, the re, in reality, it's probably because the reason that you're saved today is because you didn't listen to your parents. Yes, sir. It, it's getting quiet now. Uh, uh, the reason that you got your testimony because you didn't listen to your parents, that you didn't listen to your elders. I, I'm telling the truth here. <clears throat> listen, had I listened to my grandmama, I wouldn't have half the stuff I got going on. That's like that. That's like folks in church. Uh, I know a colleague who is going through some things because his church won't listen to him, and his church is suffering because of it. You better learn how to listen to leadership. You better learn how to listen to those folk that God puts before you to help you along your way. Because they're not there to hurt you. They're there to help you. You know, uh, you know, when your grandmama or your mom used to say, listen, it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> and because we do not listen, the Lord chasteneth whom he loveth. And he said, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. But you still going to make it. They didn't listen to Paul. Why? Because Paul represented the preacher. <clears throat> the ship represented the church. The 276 men represented the members. <clears throat> so the question is, Deaconess Williams, what really caused this ship to be broken up into pieces. Number one, they didn't listen. You want to see a broken church, you'll find broken people because they didn't listen. Well, verse 11 of 27 says, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. It's in your Bible. See, they believed in the weatherman. They believed it was all right to sail. But they would not believe the weather maker. I wish I had a witness. The weather maker who gave the pigeon, the, the pigeon, who gave the, the vision to Paul to say, don't go. It reminds me of that scripture that says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Death, Proverbs 14, 12. And they ended up in a storm <clears throat> with, uh, with east winds that totally dismantled their whole ship. The preacher <laughs> was aboard the ship, yet his advice wasn't good enough. Oh, I was going to get real quiet now. I better fix myself. Deaconess Cooper, the preacher, was on the ship. <clears throat> God's man was on the ship. The preacher, Deaconess Williams, was on the ship. The members was on the ship. The boat was the church. In other words, the preacher was in the pulpit. The members was in the pew in the church. The preacher was on the pulpit. The preacher was giving them sound advice.
the preacher was saying there's a storm coming. You know that old song, uh, 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 there's a storm out on the ocean. The preacher was telling the people it ain't time to sail yet, but the people in the church thought they knew more than the preacher did, and the preacher is the one whom God is speaking to. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I better leave that alone. Uh, uh, maybe I'll just say that again. Uh, the preacher was in the pulpit. The pulpit was Paul. The, the preacher was Paul. The ship was the church. The people were the members. They were in the pews. The Paul and the preacher was telling the people, listen, you better watch out for that. You better watch out for this. We better not do that. We better be on one accord. We better try this. But the people thought they knew better than Paul because Paul, for them, were in was in shackles. See, there are some church people, there are some church boys that believe that they run the church and the pastor, they put shackles on the pastor where he can't pastor his church. And then you wonder why your church is broken. You wonder why your church is shipwrecked because you're taking authority that don't belong to you. I better stop right there. Uh, you put shackles on the preacher and only want the preacher to do what you want him to do. But the preacher cannot do what the people want him to do. The preacher's got to do what God told him to do. And half the time when the preacher tells the people what God told him to do, the preacher gets in trouble with the people because the people really don't want to do what God told them to do. I better stop listening. And so you are shipwrecked, you are broken, you are on your way drowning because you won't listen to the weather maker who gave you the preacher and he called the pastor. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart that I give pastors as gifts. And when you take advantage of the gifts that God gives you, God will take away the gift back. God will take the gift back. You better learn how to listen to the preacher or you will be shipwrecked. You'll be shipwrecked in your relationship. You'll be shipwrecked in your household. You'll be shipwrecked in your church. You'll be shipwrecked on your job. You'll be shipwrecked in your finances. You'll be shipwrecked in your health. You better learn how to listen to the weather maker and not the weather man. Because God is not a man that he should lie. He's the weather maker. Well, Pastor, how can you say he's the weather maker? Well, I've told you before, this is the same God that stepped out on a platform of nothing, reached back and grabbed a handful of nothing and placed the stars in the four corners of the midnight. This is the same man that batted his eyes and birds flew and fish swam. This is the same man that put the sun 63 billion miles in the air and this moon 40 million miles in the air. I'm talking about a man who created us. This is the same man that counseled with himself and said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And he breathed the, the breath into man's nostrils. And the text says that man became a living soul. But these people are in the pews, uh, Deaconess Cooper. They don't even have oars. They don't even have oars. And that means they don't even have a sense of direction. I wish I had a witness. Uh, they can't even sail the right way. Because they are so focused on making sure they get what they want. Oh, I know I'm going to lose some folks. I know some folks say, Pastor, you're preaching too long. Yeah, I might be preaching too long, but I'm preaching real good. And I'm doing the best I can. And listen, and I'm preaching for me too. I wish I had a witness. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul was the preacher. And the people were so focused on shutting Paul up. and Didn't want to listen to Paul. But the text says, the text says, now notice, wait a minute. Notice what God doesn't do, Ebony. Paul was the only preacher on board. That's right, that's right. Only. There was only one preacher on board. There was no other preacher on board to give advice and give uh, 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 discern and discern what the Lord was saying at the time. Paul was the only one on board. Now I told you Paul represented the preacher. The ship represented the church building and the people represented its members. And there was only one preacher on the shower, I had a witness. 
And that ought to suggest to somebody that there could only be one voice when God speaks. I don't care what you heard in your prayer when before you came here, whether you're a deacon or a trustee or a steward or whatever you are and what ministry you serve, there is only one preacher. There is only one voice that gives direction to what God wants for his people. And the moment you fail to listen to that one voice is the moment that you'll be holding on to broken pieces. It's in, it's in the text. It's in the text. And remember, and remember, and, and, and Deacon Scooper, here's, here's, the other, here's the other thing I like about the text. What I like about the text is that who God chose. That's right. That's right. Who he chose. See, normally uh, with some of our churches, uh, they, 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 they want resumes of preachers. They want to see where they graduated school from. They want pastors with doctoral degrees and they want pastors with D-mens and uh, M-divs. Uh, that's all well and good. And I, and I believe in the academia. I believe that that is what should help a preacher because even the, the, we even had the, the school of the prophets in the Old Testament. I believe in the academic education, but they got to have some spiritual uh, spirituality in them too. They've got to be able to hear from the Lord. You can have all the degrees in the world. You can go to the best schools and still have no relationship with God and still be called a preacher. I heard preachers in pulpits that ain't said nothing and got more degrees than anybody got uh, toes on their feet. Degrees is not what makes the preacher. It's when God qualifies the call. And there are some churches that get in, have gotten in trouble because they were so focused on what kind of preacher they wanted where they failed to listen to whom God wanted them to have. Oh, can I get personal? Can, can, I, can, I, can I bring it? Uh, uh, can, I, can, I bring it can I bring it home? Can I come down your road? Uh, the reason that some of your marriages didn't work is because you want you picked who you wanted. Oh, I know I'm going to lose everybody now. They're about to pack up and leave me now. Uh, you, 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 you chose who you wanted. The reason that your relationship didn't work is because you chose what you saw. Should I stop right there? Uh, you like what you saw. Oh, you like what you saw now. Uh, all of us are guilty of liking what we see. Uh, uh, it, it, it piques our interest. Come on, talk back to me and be real in this place. Uh, uh, and, but but we, we had to experience heartache and, and being shipwrecked because what we liked and what we saw was not in the plan of God. Because the reality of it is uh, uh, the person that might have been for you may not have been your type. And so that calls into question, should it be your type or God's type? Amen. Come on. Well, pastor, I want a man that's got a six pack. Well, the man with the gut is the one that's going to provide for you. Because <laughs> he eats. <laughs> he eats. He eats. <laughs> oh, well, he's in good health. He goes to the gym. Yeah, he spends more time in the gym than he spends with you. I better stop. I better stop right now. Sky, I'm about to lose them. I know that battery's about to die in a minute. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm losing them now. Uh, uh, so, so uh, that's what we do in our life. We make the decisions for ourselves without consulting God. God can, you can't get anything out of that. God doesn't get no glory out of what you want. And there's only one preacher, one ship. It can be a whole lot of members, but one preacher. I don't know about this co-pastoring nonsense. I haven't read that in the book yet. But there's only one preacher. They got on this ship. Here it is, Ebony. I'm coming home. They're sailing on this ship. Oh, they got it going on. Listen, yeah, you know, they got Marvin Gaye. Listen, they they, 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 on, they listen to Murray. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, na, na, na. Ooh. <laughs> Boom. Shipwreck. Shipwreck. 
And then God starts singing, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, you ain't got no boat. Shipwreck. And they found themselves, listen, they found themselves on a ship, shipwrecked in a storm for 14 days. Had they waited, Tiana, they would have never experienced the storm because of their obedience. But because of their disobedience, Deaconess Williams, they were in the storm and had to spend 14 days in trouble, not knowing whether they would live or die. Well, Deacon Johnson, I know you're watching, and I want you to know that even in the midst of the shipwreck, verse 22 said, but of, be of good cheer, there shall be no loss of life, but just this ship. Now, listen to the, view the mercy and the goodness in the text. Here is the preacher that told them 276 members, don't you get in this church and try to move the church anywhere. It ain't your job to move the church because there can only be one conductor. But if y'all want to go, y'all to lock me up, put me in the bottom of the boat, y'all do y'all thing. Tell Marvin Gaye I said hello. <laughs> they get into, they get into a 14 day storm. But the text says, the text is, even in the midst of your trouble, even in the midst of your disobedience, even in the midst of your persecuting the preacher, y'all be of good cheer. Because nobody shall lose their life lest this ship. So the church may crumble down and fall but there shall be not one piece, a loss of life anywhere. And all of this happened because of the storm. And this is my recommendation to you, that even when your ship is torn apart, relationships, friendships, love ships, Whatever ship it is, employment ship. I'm making up words, but you get my point. Even when your ship is being torn apart, learn how to hang on to the ship. Pastor, what do you mean hang on to the ship? The text says they held on to the broken pieces which means they hung on to the same thing that they destroyed. Yeah. Pastor, what are you talking about? You might be the cause of your own problem. You want to let go because you think that situation is the problem. When in actuality, the problem just might have been you because you weren't listening and you were disobedient. And so now you've broken up your relationships. You've broken up your friendships. Uh, uh, you, you've broken all this up. But the text says, even when it's broken, hang on to some pieces because what you broke, you're going to need to survive. I wish I had a witness. Learn how not to cut everybody and everything off. I better, I better hush. And if you, uh, Deaconess Cooper, if you got a piece of the choir, hang on to it. Uh, Sister Shepherd, if you got a piece of the usher board, 
hang on to it. If you have a piece of membership, hang on to it. Learn how to stay with the ship. Learn how to hold on to broken pieces. Officers may resign, but stay with the ship. Preachers may quit, but stay with the ship. Members may leave the church, but stay with the ship. Hold on to the old ship of Zion because King Jesus is the captain. Have I got a witness? Some came floating on doors. Some came floating on oars. Some came floating on seats and some came floating on windows. But Jesus said, for those who come floating on doors, that I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And I shall go in and out and find pastures. And some came in floating on seats. And for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Same came, some came floating on windows. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And finally, some came floating on broken boards and pieces because they stayed with the ship. That which they destroyed, that which would have saved them, that which would have protected them had they been obedient, still saved them in their disobedience. How do God, how do I survive a storm and still trust you? Because even though you're broken, you can still hang on to the pieces. And when you get home, I can take those broken pieces and put it back together again. We are in a storm. We are in a pandemic. But we have not lost our faith. We have not lost our trust in God. Because we know who Christ is. Why? Because we know what he's done already in our lives. We, uh, and, and half the stuff that he's done, we don't even deserve. Nobody deserves the things that God has given us, the mercies that he gives us daily, the grace that he bestows upon us. But he gives us that blessed assurance that we are his and he is ours. Isn't that good news to the believer? I hope this word finds a lodging place in your life. I hope this word will penetrate your very being. I hope this word will compel you to look and examine yourselves and look at your broken pieces. Don't throw away the pieces. Hang on to it. I was washing my dishes a couple weeks ago and my godmother, when I cleaned out her house, she had a mug that had her initials on it. It's crystal. And it was so thin that when I put my hand in it, it cracked. And I said, the glass is no good to me. I can't use it because there's no liquid that can be held in it. It's cracked. It's no good. Can't do anything with it, but put it on a shelf. And I thought about that thing. I said, it's broken. I can't do anything with it. I can't glue it back together. It's a fine 
crack in it. Liquid leaks out of it, right at the handle. God, I can't even hold it, but this was my godmother's. I, I don't want to get rid of it. He said, hang on to it. But there's a man that specializes in fixing cracked glass and he can put it back together again. And you'll never know that it was ever broken. All I'm trying to say to somebody today is perhaps you might be broken. Perhaps you might be cracked. And you want to throw your life away. You want to give up. You want to let go. But there's a man who specializes in things impossible. There is a potter who's sitting at the wheel and he's waiting for you to accept and receive him in your life. And you know what he wants you to do? When you hear the saying, come as you are, it's not talking about your dress. It's talking about your, the total man. God wants your cracks, your chips. He wants you just as you are so that he can show you what he can do and how powerful he is. You need God to fix your cracks. You need God to fix your broken pieces. Well, Pastor, I don't need God. Yes, you do, because if you didn't need him, it'd be fixed. If you didn't need him, if you could fix it yourself, it would have already been done. But you find out that's something that I just don't specialize in. I cannot fix me. Why? Because I didn't make me. I, I, I may, but, but Pastor, I'm good with anatomy. Yeah, you might be good with anatomy, but you don't even know where anatomy came from. Who knoweth the mind of God? Only God can heal and fix your broken pieces. It's it, it it's a bad it's a bad situation when you're broken in your storm. It's bad when you're broken and God wants to fill your cup, but he can't fill your cup because you've got cracks in it. You cannot receive an, oh, give me, Lord Jesus. You can't receive an overflow with cracks in your cup. You, 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 you can't receive the overflow if you've got cracks in the cup because it won't overflow, it will just leak. And when something leaks, it makes a mess because it's uncontrolled. Overflow pours out. Leaks just run. Oh, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need an overflow. And I need God to fix some of the cracks in my cup. Some of the broken pieces in my life. And I believe that some of you are here and watching. You know you're broken in the midst of this pandemic. You're worried. You're fearful. You're frightened. You don't want to come out your house because you're broken. You're cracked. But God is able to fix you. exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask say or think god is able if you're watching and you are visiting with us this is your opportunity to come and receive the lord for i have received of the lord that's what paul said right this same Jesus, this same Jesus that went to the cross, I received him. 
I receive him into my heart on that Damascus road. Christ wants you now. Christ wants you now. And all you have to do is open your mouth, open your arms and say, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against heaven and earth. But God, I want to receive you into my life. I want to begin to walk with you. I want to learn of the hidden mysteries of you. I want to change my life. I need a change. I need a shift. I need these cracks fixed. I need these broken pieces mended back together again. But I got some good news too. The text said the only thing that was destroyed was the ship. And they came in on broken pieces. 276 came in on broken pieces. The boat and the ship was able to provide a piece for everybody. Which suggests to me, I wish I had a witness here, which suggests to me that even the broken pieces could come back together because they all brought a piece of the ship with them. But even if the ship is not put back together again, created me a clean heart, oh God, and renewing me a right spirit. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. God makes something new out of my life. If you say it is broken and it can be fixed, well, shift me and give me something new. Somebody needs something new. And those broken pieces are the things that's been holding you back from seeing the full manifestation of God. It's time now to receive of the Lord. Oh, I surrender. Shall we stand and sing the first verse? Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to him. Second call is a call for rededication. If you're saved, you've been baptized, but for some reason or another, you 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 you, you backslid. Got good news for you now. God is married to the backslider. That's you. That's me. Paul said, "For we all come short, fall short of the glory of God." All of us go through this thing. Would you come back to him? I surrender all.
Oh, I surrender all. Third and final call is a call for membership. Perhaps you've been watching this broadcast every week since we've been in quarantine and the Lord is pressing upon your life for you to join this ship of Zion, this fellowship, uh, this branch of Zion rather. Uh, we welcome you to the First Refuge Progressive Baptist Church. We welcome you to join this branch of Zion, 1479 Kane Avenue, Camden, New Jersey. If you want to become a member of our church, all you have to do, inbox us on Facebook in our messenger or send us an email at firstrefugebaptist at gmail.com. Leave your name, your, your information. Let us know if you want to be a candidate for baptism. Let us know if you want to be, if you come by your Christian experience on the profession of your faith. And we will receive you in like manner. But would you send us an email or even give us a call, 856-365-4343, 856-365-4343. Leave us a message and we will get back to you promptly. I surrender all. Blessing, oh, I. come on, let's do it one more time. Let it ring out. I surrender. to us beloved of the Lord it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and bless us in more ways than one we need the Lord in our lives we need him more than ever before and so, my father's children, as we leave you, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory, to the only wise God be all power, dominion now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. amen. And shall we sing our song?
take Jesus with you everywhere you go. The angels keep watching. Take him with you. For the me. My beloveds, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's just a praise. I'm going to break it down in a minute. Thank you. 